Good morning. Welcome to Inquisition Update. My name's Tom Fress, and I'll be your host for the next hour. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll continue where we left off yesterday in the book, The Footprints of the Jesuits by R.W. Thompson. But before we do, I want to remind the listeners that we're talking about a literary work uh, first issued by an Italian, that country that had rebelled against the papacy, set aside the Pope's temporal power and established their own government of, by, and for the people, a republic, following the example of the Protestant reformers. This work showed up in Italy, written by a man by the name of P. Franco, just the, the first initial of the of the first name, P. Franco. That's as far as the identification goes. But that work, considered so important, was translated by a prime minister of the English Parliament, Lord Robert, uh, um, excuse me, Montague, Lord Robert Montague. And it was entitled, Popular Errors Concerning Politics and Religion. And that has been the discussion on uh, Inquisition Update for the last couple of days, that what this work was literally about. And if you are careful to pay attention, you you simply can see from this work that the Pope is declaring himself to be God on earth, and that all the governments of the world following the example of the Protestant reformers, are heretical and have rebelled against the church and must return to obedience to the Pope. They must, by any means and every means possible, restore the temporal power of the Pope, repent of their republicanism, and uh, and to do so as a matter of of, 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 of faith to return to the quote-unquote Christian religion by overthrowing their governments and restoring monarchical forms of government. And we talked about uh, the relationship of the church to all these governments, that the governments should be responsible to the papacy, to the church. And uh, no other no other alternative is acceptable to the papacy. And as far as the rights of the people, they come from the Pope and not from civil governments. And that the laws and liberties given by these so-called republics are not laws at all. And they can be overcome and and overthrown whenever the opportunity presents itself. Repeatedly, the papacy has threatened all the governments of the world to return to Roman Catholic canon law and the temporal power of the Pope. In other words, to return to the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, and 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 give up Protestantism and all that came out from it, all that resulted from it. And you see leading this charge, the Jesuits. The Jesuits are the ones who are assigned by the Roman Catholic Church, the warriors of the Pope, to overthrow governments that are contrary to the papal authority. And for continuity purposes, I'll begin reading the first, or the last full paragraph, beginning at the bottom of page 450, if you're following along in the book. He even deals with relationships between Roman Catholics and non-Roman Catholics. Here's what he says. He proceeds with marvelous complacency to argue that Protestants have no right to be intolerant toward Roman Catholics because, quote, they have no business to imagine that truth is on their side. Protestants have no business to imagine that truth is on their side. Now, we recognize truth as Christ, right? And the Pope is sure that his message will not be missed, that we have no business, we Protestants have no business to imagine that Christ is on our side. And, quote, lies and errors have no rights. In other words, the papacy is calling us liars and erroneous. And we have no rights because we have rebelled against the fountain of rights in the world, the vicar of Christ, the papacy. 
But Roman Catholics have a right, he says, to be intolerant toward Protestants because truth abides only with them. In other words, Christ abides only with them. And that abiding is the Pope. Okay? The Pope is the representative of Christ. Therefore, the Roman Catholic Church is the only one who has Christ. The Protestants do not have the Pope. They've rejected the Pope. Therefore, they do not have Christ, and they have no rights. And they have no right to be intolerant of Roman Catholicism. But Roman Catholics have a divine right to be intolerant against Protestants. And that characterizes all of history. All of the history that we cover here on Inquisition Update that is ignored in the, in the, in the, in the school books, the college classrooms, the elementary schools, even in the churches today. All this history completely left outside the pale of education. And it is left out for an obvious purpose now. My listeners should be well acquainted with why this, this information is not presented in the schools today. Now he begins to assail the liberty of the press. Now this is, this is one that is particularly sensitive to me because it limits my speech and it, and it, and obviously more and more people in this country are becoming aware that the mainstream and the alternative medias in this country are not telling us the truth. Misinformation, disinformation, and outright lies. And covering up, actively covering up what's really going on in this country. Which if my listeners should well know by now what is really going on in this country and who is responsible for it. The papacy. The press is owned. Has even come out now from a high up official, uh, Karen Hudis, a whistleblower of the World Bank has come forward and said that the same people, the same people that run the Federal Reserve Bank, which she identifies as a super entity controlled by the Jesuits, are the same ones who control the press because they own the press. And so many times, as we've pointed out, one of the biggest press magnates in this country, Rupert Murdoch, is a knight of St. Gregory the Great. And he answers to the Pope. Okay, and uh, Karen Hudis has made this a public statement that the press is controlled by the Jesuits. And this has been known and talked about here on Inquisition Update for literally seven years. And now it's finally coming out in, in, in someone's voice who cannot be ignored. Karen Hudis, a whistleblower. Now, I'm not lauding everything about Karen Hudis. My research into Karen Hudis has only recently begun, but I've already detected that her answer to our problems is a constitutional convention, which will work in Rome's favor, because Rome controls politics. So any political discussion bringing into question our Constitution literally falls into the purview of the warnings that we are now receiving from R.W. Thompson in this book. They want to bring into question our Constitution. They want to completely rewrite the Constitution, if not completely do away with it altogether, and return us to a monarchical form of government. Karen Hudis is wrong in that respect. A constitutional Congress is not the answer for the American people. Now, I reject the idea of an armed rebellion. Uh, my focus has always been on Inquisition Update to educate. To educate. Education does not involve warfare. Education is what led the Protestant Reformation that nearly destroyed the papacy, and it did it without a shot. Did it without firing a shot. Now, obviously, there was war after the Protestant Reformation because Rome wouldn't easily give up her jurisdiction and her pretended claims. But this is America. And even Roman Catholics in this country understand, at least if they are given this history, this knowledge and understanding that R.W. Thompson is talking about, 
They do not want the temporal power of the Pope reestablished in America. They enjoy religious liberty, and they know that if they take away that religious liberty for Protestants in this country, Protestantism will rise up once again. At least that's the thesis of Inquisition Update. What, what history will bear can only be a, can only be extrapolated from Scripture. And to me, it doesn't appear that Protestantism will prevail in this nation. That as a nation, it will go the way of Rome, and always, as it throughout history, God will preserve a remnant. And it's incumbent upon all my listeners to prepare themselves to be a part of that remnant, to reject the Antichrist, and to cling tightly to Christ, to reject Roman Catholic canon law, and hold tightly to God's protections within his law, to resist tyranny as much as possible, and maintain the liberty whereby Christ hath made us free. Now, continuing page 451, the first full paragraph, the liberty of the press is especially denounced in this work by Montague, or rather the Italian, P. Franco. It says it is called, quote, the most hurtful of liberties, unquote. That's right. The papacy says that liberty of the press, that is, the right of the press to cover the news and to tell the truth about what's really going on in the world, quote, is the most hurtful of liberties, according to the Pope, and restrains and, quote, checks, <clears throat> excuse me, and restraints and, quote, checks should be imposed upon the press. Now, the obvious question is, what form of checks would the Pope suggest that should be imposed upon the press? R.W. Thompson's going to tell us. He says, it is condemned, that is, liberty of the press is condemned as, quote, a crime, unquote. And it is said, quote, there is no right to a freedom of the press, unquote. Now, remember, all rights come from the Pope, according to the papacy, and the Pope denies the right to freedom of the press. Now, in order to prove how hard the popes and the Roman Catholic councils have struggled to put a stop to, quote, telling lies in public, unquote, by, quote, newspaper editors, unquote, he cites the, quote, strict orders, unquote, issued by the Lateran Council under Leo X, that nothing should be published which the bishops did not approve. In other words, the papers have no right to lie on their own. They only have the right to tell... Excuse me. <clears throat> Sounds like we're having some interference from <laughs> a solar eruption. Hang on a second. I recognize that sound. Maybe it'll go away. But literally what he's saying is the press has no right to tell lies on its own. It only has the right to tell the lies that the bishops approve. Okay? Now you know why your press is, 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 is corrupt. Now you know why we're not getting the truth, and now you know why we're not being told what Rome, what, what role that Rome is playing in national <clears throat> and international affairs. We're not told what the true purpose of the wars are. The true reason for fighting these wars, which I call papal crusades, we're never told Rome's connection in all this stuff because the press is protecting Rome. Because the press is owned by knights, papal knights like Rupert Murdoch, and those who are owned and controlled by the Jesuit order, according to Karen Hudis and other experts in this research. So, we are being told lies, guaranteed we are being told lies, misinformation, and disinformation. And we're being told lies because the bishops of the Roman Catholic Church are the ones who approve and disapprove what is published in the media. No right of freedom of press. No right of freedom of speech. 
All forms of communication in this country are corrupted, and they're co-opted by the priests of Rome, the bishops of Rome. He says, in order to prove how hard the popes and the councils have struggled to put a stop to, quote, telling the truth and, <coughs> excuse me, in order to prove how hard the popes and the councils have struggled to put a stop to, quote, telling lies in public, unquote, by, quote, newspaper editors, unquote, he cites the, quote, strict orders, unquote, issued by the Lateran Council, the Lateran Council under Pope Leo X, that nothing should be published which the Roman Catholic bishops did not approve. And the renewal of these orders came by the Council of Trent. Okay? First it was the Lateran Council, and then the Council of Trent reiterated, no liberty of the press. The press should be controlled by the church. The information that we get should be censored and sifted by the priests of Rome. And we should only get a version of the news and of history that is favorable to the bishops of Rome. There, there, there is, there is no coincidence in the fact that Rupert Murdoch and the financiers of the largest press organizations in this country are subservient to the papacy. Subservient to the Jesuit order. It's no coincidence. This has been established long ago at the Lateran Council and even reiterated at the Council of Trent in 1565 right after the Protestant Reformation. And Rome's attempt to control the information that you and I receive in the mainstream, the alternative medias, in the schools, in the colleges, in the universities, and even in our own churches, is controlled by the papacy. Now, some people will recoil and say, oh, Tom, they don't have control of what is, is said and done in the churches. More and more people are becoming aware of the fact that the 501c3 offered by our government puts restraints upon what a pastor and a church can do and say. Putting a gag in their mouth. <clears throat> they can't enter into politics from the pulpit because that is reserved for the papacy and her bishops alone. Okay? Remember that the state should serve the Roman Catholic Church? So if the Protestant pastors in these 501c3 church, uh, churches begin to preach against Roman influence in the government, then our government, which is subservient to the papacy, can come in and confiscate all the, 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 uh, the property of the church and put liens upon the board of directors of those churches. Rome is going to have her way. She's already laid the foundation for the overthrow of this country by silencing the Protestant voice in the press and in the churches. Now, he then enumerates the following popes who prescribe rules and injunctions to prevent these commands from being event, uh, uh, evaded. All right. Reiteration came from Alexander the Seventh. Clement VIII, Benedict XIV, Pius VI, Pius VII, Leo XII, Pius VIII, and Gregory XVI, the last of whom is represented as saying that, quote, the freedom of the press is, quote, detestable and execrable, unquote. And lastly, Pope Pius IX, in the, six, in the 79th proposition of his Syllabus of Errors of 1864. So you've got a whole list of popes that have expounded on the necessity for the control of the press. No freedom of press. And obviously that includes no freedom of speech either. The papacy had their way in this country. Inquisition update would be regarded as heresy. It would be regarded as, like they use the term today, hate speech and it would be taken off the air. 
just like I was taken off of amateur radio. I was reaching too many people on amateur radio. On amateur radio, I could run full legal limit power. I had a good antenna at a, at a good height, and I was, I was heard in all 48 states and some of Mexico and Canada. And I was telling the truth, the very same truths that I tell here on Inquisition Update. And Rome launched such opposition against what I was saying that they simply drowned me out with malicious interference. People talking over me and playing recordings and music, hurling anathemas and damnations and threats of murder against me. And the Federal Communications Commission took no action against all that malicious interference, which is an actionable violation of FCC rules and regulations. You would think that a government organization like the Federal Communications Commission would uphold the First Amendment right of freedom of speech, especially on amateur radio, where freedom of speech is is lauded. But the Federal Communication took no action, not one single action against the malicious interference that I was subjected to for a period of close to 10 years on amateur radio. Every night. I used to tell people, they would write me an email and ask me, Tom, where, where, where can we find you on ham radio? We want to listen to what you have to say. Well, I'd simply tell them, just spin the dial on your radio up and down the band until you hear this ungodly noise, the loudest noise on all the band. That's me. And you'll be lucky to hear me for all the malicious interference. All you have to do is stick your finger in the hole in your VFO and spin it real fast and watch your S meter on your radio. And when it peaks, that's where I am. And that's how they found me. They dial up and down the band until they heard the most commotion they'd ever heard in their lives. And that's where I was. They had to strain to hear me because there were dozens, if not hundreds of people maliciously interfering my transmissions on amateur radio. And of course the response for the FCC was, well we simply don't have the resources to direction find these malicious interferers and to take action against them. We just don't have the manpower, we just don't have the money, and we just don't have the time, and besides that, we don't like what you're saying on ham radio. You're trying to start a religious war. So the federal government, which is bound to uphold the First Amendment of the Constitution, strategically let the jamming continue until people simply wouldn't subject themselves to it anymore. That the people who were willing to participate in my discussions simply had, all they had to do was a cost-benefit analysis. What are we achieving? Absolutely nothing, because nobody can hear us. Why subject ourselves to this torment every night? Why subject ourselves to all these insults and threats, lethal threats, and all this commotion when nobody seems to care, nobody seems to defend the discussion, nobody seems to claim our right to be here on ham radio to talk about these things? What's the use? And listen, if those people were given the power to do the likewise here on First Amendment Radio, there wouldn't be any Inquisition update. The federal government is controlled by the papacy and allows malicious interference to take place against Protestant speech, speech that is supposed to be protected by the First Amendment, the right to criticize both the Pope and the King. We'll be back to Inquisition Update right after the message.
100 days, 100 subscribers. At $7, we'll bring FirstAmendmentRadio.com to the minimum level necessary to sustain it through 2015. Go to support.firstamendmentradio.com. $7 a month. Really, you can afford that for our Protestant First Amendment rights and the Gospel of the Kingdom message. Where your heart is, there will your treasure be also. Go to support.firstamendmentradio.com. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Have you seen the Left Behind movies? Have you read the Left Behind fictional book series? Not everyone believes Left Behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. Because they see the world stage shaping to fulfill what they have been led to believe is sound biblical interpretation, a left behind rapture scenario. This false view of prophecy is reinforced in the mind, not only of its adherents, but also includes those who have been merely exposed to the specific media. Is it possible that false prophecy can be fulfilled? The rapture theories have always been in dispute, pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib disputes have risen up in exclusively evangelical circles of recent history. So that when true believers don't suddenly disappear, this element will easily go by the wayside when all see a new Jewish temple begin to be built. Will this be part of the great delusion that will come upon the whole earth? It seems that this great prophetic delusion has already overcome practically the entire American evangelical and Christian world. In the book, The Rapture Will Be Cancelled. To learn more, visit CrossTheBorder.org. That's C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org. Record budget deficits, bankruptcies galore, and the U.S. dollar is at an all-time low. With today's gloomy economic outlook, safe investments are often hard to find. For over a decade, Melody Cedarstrom at Discount Gold and Silver Trading Company has been helping people secure their future by investing in the precious metals. Melody has the honesty, integrity, and experience that is often lacking in the precious metals business. Let her put it to work for you. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 800-375-4188. That's 800-375-4188. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for missionary radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host cause and anywhere else the spirit may lead you do all to the glory of our God and creator for his holy nation the only kingdom that will last forever thank you for listening
Welcome back from the break. You're listening to the second half hour of Inquisition Update on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. If you like Inquisition Update, you value the information that you get here, please support Inquisition Update by supporting First Amendment Radio. And also, if you wish to contact me, especially if you have any inside information of the organized effort led by the Federal Communications Commission Amateur Radio Enforcement Bureau or the Amateur Radio Relay League to coordinate jamming against my amateur radio operations, email me, tom at seawaves.us. That's tom at seawaves.us. And before I leave this subject, I want to inform my listeners, I'm finally going to come out with this. I've protected this man long enough. The man who was principally responsible for the oversight of amateur radio, the one whose business it was to take legal action against the licenses of those who maliciously and intentionally interfered with my amateur radio operations, his name was Riley Hollingsworth. Riley Hollingsworth. He was a devout papist. And he was given charge of enforcing the amateur radio rules and regulations as the special counsel for amateur radio enforcement. SCARE, we called him. Special counsel for amateur radio enforcement. He was a, he was a lawyer, you know. Romans just love law. And this one made his living in law, particularly in the federal government under the Federal Communications Commission. Now, given light of what we have just read in this book about freedom of the press and freedom of religion or and freedom of speech, what the popes view as what is legitimate speech and what is legitimate press, that which is already filtered and controlled and dispensed by the bishops of the Roman Catholic Church, Naturally, you would find that Riley Hollingsworth, a devout Roman Catholic, would be offended by the truth being told on amateur radio about the Roman Catholic Church, about the papacy, and about its designs to control and overthrow the government of the United States. And you might ask yourself, why was Riley Hollingsworth, a devout Roman Catholic, a papist, allowed to become the special counsel for amateur radio enforcement, if it weren't the purpose of Roman Catholics to get jobs in the Federal Communication Commission, not to uphold the First Amendment of the Constitution, but to thwart it. That's what I assert Riley Hollingsworth's job was, and not only in my case, but in other cases in amateur radio, where speech was regarded as controversial or dealt specifically with religion and politics, wink, wink, Riley Hollingsworth took a hands-off approach to all the malicious interference. Malicious and intentional interference against those discussions and groups and people who engaged in discussions about politics and religion. Interestingly, you know, they can talk about smut and pornography and drug abuse and their other, their other civil crimes that they commit on amateur radio, the FCC takes no position against that. No problem with that. But if they discuss politics and religion, then they become a target of the Federal Communication Commission and her sister organization, a pseudo-governmental organization who is supposed to be a proponent of amateur radio and free speech, the Amateur Radio Relay League. the Amateur Radio Relay League. And they have been given pseudo-governmental or uh, authority by the Federal Communications Commission to help enforce the rules of amateur radio. And their duty is to assign certain licensed amateurs to monitor the bands and to make note of particular violations by individual amateur radio operators and then send them what are known as official observer cards, warning them about their violation and that if the violations continue, their case will be referred to the Federal Communications Commission for enforcement action. And don't you know, I had a stack of those OO cards for simply holding discussions that 
of the OOs considered to be more suitable, not for amateur radio, but for the Internet or some other form of communication, but not on ham radio. In other words, the First Amendment does not apply to ham radio. The Amateur Radio Relay League despises the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, and particularly the First Amendment, and particularly those who criticize both the Pope and the King, and especially Tom Fress, who understands that the church and the state are now in bed together. There is a union of church and state, and both are now sacred and sacrosanct, and cannot be criticized on amateur radio, and that if anybody does criticize either the church or the state and exposes the fact that they are now in bed together, leading us into in crusade after crusade for the conquering of the rest of the world for the papacy and are about to overthrow our government, well, those discussions just don't belong on ham radio. And though it is our bounden duty to enforce the amateur radio rules and regulations that specifically prohibit malicious and intentional interference against the licensed communication of amateur radio operators, they simply don't enforce the rule against malicious and intentional interference, and they do it selectively. Like I said, against my discussions on amateur radio, and those of several others who have taken up the sword of this, of speech against the government and the church. It's a concerted effort. We have people in our government, in this case Riley Hollingsworth, special counsel for amateur radio enforcement, who is a Roman Catholic who didn't particularly like the content of my speech, which is protected by the First Amendment could not take any official action against my speech because of that First Amendment guarantee, simply allowed the jamming to continue unmolested. And now I'm come to the awareness that the, the, that the Federal Communications Commission Special Counsel for Amateur Radio Enforcement, who is now Laura Smith, a friend of the family of Riley Hollingsworth, is continuing this policy of a hands-off attitude toward those who maliciously interfere with legitimate protected speech on amateur radio that is critical of the government and of the church. And it's not me this time, it's other groups and other individuals that are being targeted by this jamming. And I've even become aware that now the Federal Communications Commission and the Amateur Radio Relay League are actually coordinating the jamming. So here we have a government agency, the Federal Communications Commission, with the help of the Amateur Radio Relay League, are specifically targeting speech that is critical of our government and of the Roman Catholic Church's role in it. And how long will Inquisition Update last? It's up to you, the listeners. It's up to you, the listeners, to express your protest by helping to support First Amendment radio for as long as it lasts. What is taking place on amateur radio is an outrage, and it's time to muster up our Protestant spirit and levy protests against the Federal Communications Commission's lack of commitment to the First Amendment of the Constitution. It's time for Riley Hollingsworth to be to be called into account for his strategic non-enforcement of the of the written rules of amateur radio for a purpose, a religious purpose, a Roman Catholic purpose. It's time to remind Protestants that the most recent encyclical that was issued by Pope Benedict XVI, Caritas and Veritate, made it a matter of excommunication that every Roman Catholic in this country to use his occupation and his avocation to help institute papal decrees in this country, even if they go against the Constitution of the United States. We're seeing a rebellion in this country by Roman Catholics, individual Roman Catholics, to overthrow the liberties that we have enjoyed since the Protestant Reformation. It's time for my listeners to understand where this where this opposition comes from and the direction it's taking us. And R.W. Thompson is 
is the best source for that understanding, R.W. Thompson. I want my rights back. I want my right to expose the Vatican Jesuit-led New World Order, not just on Inquisition Update and First Amendment Radio, but on amateur radio, where my signal could potentially be heard by every single American. I want my rights preserved and protected by the Federal Communications Commission, whose commission it is to uphold the Constitution of the United States, and whose obligation it is to stop malicious and intentional interference. You know, if they allow malicious and intentional interference on amateur radio, what's to disallow a Roman Catholic from patching in over the wire to First Amendment radio and disrupting the regular programming? And I suggest to you, many times it appears that that has been happening. We know one particular case where the cables were cut at First Amendment radio. Just simply cut. Took them off the air. And what legal action was taken? What investigation was taken as to who cut that cable? These problems are going to come to your neighborhood eventually. It isn't going to be just Tom Fress on amateur radio. It isn't going to be just First Amendment radio and Inquisition update. Somebody's going to interrupt your speech, especially if it's critical of this now sacrosanct union of church and state. Rome's not going to allow anybody to criticize or to identify or to expose this church-state union that's taking place right, right in front of our faces. Our liberties are being destroyed because the papacy has more and more and more power in the government. Riley Hollingsworth is to be condemned in the, in, in the strongest possible terms. And so is Laura Smith, the current special counsel for amateur radio enforcement. She should be brought to account for her lack of enforcement and for coordinating with the Amateur Radio Relay League to target legitimate speech on ham radio, exposing the corruption in, 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 the, in the government. If the people don't cry out, there won't be any solution. There will only be more and more and more tyranny in this country. Now I'll get off my high horse about amateur radio, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of people who valued the information they got from Tom on in, on uh, on amateur radio. There's a lot of people that told me, Tom, Tom, whatever you're doing, don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. And I proved to them I had no intention of stopping. I did it for every single night for 10 years. And as many as, I think one night I went on for 12 hours. 12 hours from 8 o'clock at night till 8 o'clock the following morning. And I suffered malicious, continual malicious interference for the entire 12 hours. You know, doing Inquisition Update here on First Amendment Radio is a cakewalk. There's nobody screaming in my ear, not even one, let alone 50 or 100, trying to drown out every word I say. I have an occasional disruption of service somehow between here and First Amendment Radio. No proof as to the purpose of it or who's who's doing it. But doing Inquisition Update is a piece of cake compared to what I did on Amateur Radio. It was nightly combat, every night. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. I never took a night off. The only nights off I took was when the thunderstorms were raging so bad that I was afraid lightning would come into the ham shack and destroy my equipment. So I shut it off and unplugged it. But outside of that, I was at the microphone every night reading the books that I read here on Inquisition Update for for anybody that would listen, begging them, beseeching them, encouraging them to do their own research into the Vatican Jesuit-led New World Order and the the Counter-Reformation. How many took my advice? I have no idea. Because every time I sign my call sign on amateur radio, somebody recognizes my voice or my call sign and summons their Roman Catholic and Freemasonic buddies and apprises them of what frequency I'm on, and they all show up at the same time and jam me completely off the band. Jamming is illegal. According to Federal Communications Commission, rules and regulations, malicious and intentional interference is cause for enforcement action, which may lead 
eventually to enormous fines, monetary fines, and the confiscation of equipment. In rim seizure of equipment. And yet nobody was fined. Nobody even received, as far as I know, an OO card for maliciously and intentionally interfering with my communications. No equipment was seized, but I received a stack of official observer cards suggesting that my discussions would best be held on another service other than amateur radio. What an outrage. And it happened in front of the entire amateur radio community. And I had no defenders. How much value do they place on their own free speech if they would see my free speech taken away? They've already set the example. When their free speech is taken away, who will come to their rescue? When they come to understand the role that the Vatican is playing in our in our government and every government in the world, when they come to understand the, the counter-reformation led by the Jesuit order to overthrow all Republican forms of government and to throw us all into a papal tyranny, a global papal tyranny, and they decide to sound the trumpet of alarm, what will they do when their First Amendment rights are taken away? Will they have sympathy for me? And what good will their sympathy be when our rights have already been taken away? And who would restore our rights? The ecumenical evangelical bellies that are all in bed with Rome now. They have a political mandate. They love their new power and prestige. Living in the shadow of the Pope of Rome, they just love basking in the sun of righteousness, don't they? What help or hope would they be to help restore Protestant liberties in this country? None. It's an outrage. We have pope after pope after pope, council after council after council of the Roman Catholic Church, the Lateran Council, the Council of Trent, damning free speech, damning freedom of the press, and a whole list of popes. And I have to believe the list that R.W. Thompson gives us is even incomplete. Why would we just allow these popes and these priests and these councils and these bishops and these individual Roman Catholics take away our freedom of speech? Our speech is the only thing that will protect their rights. Do they despise their Protestant liberties so much? Speaking again of the author of this work, Lord Robert Montague, he expresses the most sovereign contempt for the people and to the principle of fraternity which unites them in a mutual bond for the establishment and maintenance of their own civil and religious liberty. You want to know how he denounced the people who insist on establishing their own civil and religious liberties? Quote, As dogs have their bark, he says, and brindle cats have their mews, as horses have their nays, and donkeys have their brays, so have the populace, the people, their cries. Those who demand religious liberty, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, are like donkeys, and horses, and cats, and dogs. Animals. You're an animal if you sit, insist on freedom of the press and freedom of speech. That's what this Italian Roman Catholic said in his work. This is what a, an English parliamentarian translated into the English language so that all English-speaking people could read it. He says, as dogs have their bark, he says, and brindle cats their mews, as horses have their nays, and donkeys their brays, so have the populace their cries. And what was the populace crying out for at the time of the writing of this work? Liberty! Freedom of the press, freedom of speech, no more temporal power of the Pope. We will no longer be subject to the Roman tyrant, the biblical, historical, and prophetic Antichrist. They were regarded as dogs, cats, horses, and donkeys. He continues, quote, Dirty Democrats overthrow those who are above them in order to leap into their seats and oppose all other dirty Democrats, unquote. Democrats, liberals, those who 
don't think so much of Roman Catholic canon law, and after thoroughly considering, they believe themselves worthy to establish their own laws in contradistinction to those issued by the papacy from the so-called throne of Peter, the so-called vicar of Christ, this preposterous assertion that he is somehow infallible. We don't want him to govern us anymore. We don't want him to regulate our speech, our thought, our press anymore. We don't want him to regulate our conscience. Yeah, if he wants to remain Pope and still be the leader of the Roman Catholic Church, fine business. But he can't be a king over us anymore. He regards these people as dirty Democrats, overthrowing those who are above them, and who are above them the Pope and his priests, and the kings who are subservient to them in order to help leap into their seats and oppose all other dirty Democrats. In other words, he's describing this as rebellion and confusion and chaos and anarchy. This liberty in throwing off the papacy and all of his laws is anarchy, according to the papacy and according to this papal writer. He condemns the idea of the sovereignty of the people as it is established in the United States in the severest terms, where this maxim prevails, according to him, quote, no government would be possible, unquote, because everything would be in, quote, unquote, fearful disorder, for the reason that, quote, men have always lived in submission, unquote, and every society should continue to have, quote, a permanent authority over it, unquote. And as this authority must have its derivation from God, the Pope must be this permanent ruler, because he alone represents God. He draws a picture of the people performing the juggling trick, it is called the, quote, juggling trick, an acrobatic feat of functioning the office of sovereign, unquote. That's right. We are sovereign now in Christ Jesus. We enjoy his sovereignty. And those who practice it, according to the papacy, have committed a juggling trick and an acrobatic feat and have become rebellious, sitting in the seat of sovereigns when they are not to be sovereign at all. That's the teaching of the papacy. They're overthrowing our government. I hope you can have a wonderful Thanksgiving after the truth has hit you squarely in the face. I'll see you Friday. Inquisition update on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Tune in Friday. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, the rapture will be canceled. That's crossTheBorder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven year tribulation deception true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast, and the mark of the beast, and the truth about God's chosen people, and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book the rapture will be canceled. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's CrossTheBorder.org.